Take a listen to this. The Canadian Senate is a sewer that needs to be terminated. The Senate is a watchdog. A watchdog guards you. The Senate isn't guarding you any more than the wolf is guarding the sheep. Hashtag political predator. The CPC should propose Senate abolition in first term of a new government. Let the post-Senate era begin. Those comments come from one of Canada's newest senators. Over the weekend, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau added two new members to the Red Chamber. Healthcare executive Tracy Mugley from Saskatchewan and the man who wrote those tweets, broadcaster and political commentator Charles Adler from Manitoba. Charles Adler is here to talk about his new appointment. Thank you for making the time to come on the program, Charles Adler. Uh, listen, those are just a few tweets. You've said a lot of negative things over the years about the Senate. How do you explain that you're joining this institution you said should be abolished? So I'm a conservative commentator. I've been a conservative a commentator for a long time, and I don't think it should be surprising to anybody watching Power and Politics that many conservative commentators felt that way about the Senate. My language might have been a little more electrifying, but I've made a decent living. Canadians have been wonderful to me uh, doing a talk radio where I say what a lot of people are feeling, and I maybe say it a little more loudly, or shall we say it uh, boldly. So Someone asks uh, the question, Catherine is asking the question on uh, power and politics. Uh, how can I have one position on Twitter a number of years ago and uh, accept uh, an appointment from the governor general in years later, 2024? It's actually not that complicated in my mind. Uh, first of all, people evolve, but I, I, can, I think I can make your life really easy by simply saying the enemy of the good should never be perfection. And there are many ways of, of saying that. Perfection should never be the enemy of the good is the way a number of other people say it. Um, it's not perfect. Would I support Triple E, equal, effective, and most important, elected? Absolutely. You'll find tweets of me supporting the, the Triple E concept. Once again, I'm, I'm hardly a unique conservative commentator for recommending okay. that. Well, if in the next five years, because I've only got five years, it's mm -hmm. a very, very short term because I turned 70 in just a couple of weeks, Catherine. So 75, I'm out, okay? Like I'm thrown mm -hmm. out the door uh, five years from now. If in the next five years, I can be instrumental in getting the Senate to be equal, effective, and elected, I'll be the happiest conservative camper in Canada. Okay, so I, I want you to clarify something for me here, Charles. Are you saying that you have or have not had a change of heart about the Senate? Because you're making the point that those are old tweets, you're right, 2015, 2016. Um, do you still feel the same way about an institution you called for the abolition of a few years back? Well, the, the business about the abolition was if we can't get a, an equally elected uh, effective Senate, and I guess the, the, the point that's most important to me out of all of that is elected. I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I've lived everywhere in this country. I grew up in, in Quebec. I, I don't expect that Quebec would ever, um, uh, you know, well, you they know. might want to reopen the Constitution, but... <laughs> well, no, I, I just, you know, Quebec has never... Yeah. You know, if I can put my Quebec hat on here for the moment, I mean, it's really simple. If, if, um, if a national government uh, based in Ottawa, uh, whether it's conservative, liberal, whatever, expects uh, Quebec to have more, no more seats in the Senate than Prince Edward Island, uh, that's a ridiculous conversation. So I, I, I totally get that part of it, and there's no need to go any further. But as far as the uh, Senate uh, being uh, elected... Um, that's kind of the, a biggie for me, and I'd love to see that happen. And if I can be instrumental in making that happen in the next five years, as I say, uh, a lot of people will be very happy. When I, I, when I say things like, I'd be a happy camper, whatever, I'm not just speaking for myself. Clearly, I am mm -hmm. speaking for myself on, in this conversation, but I know from the millions of people that I've broadcast you over the years and the hundreds of thousands of tweets and emails and handshakes and lunches and coffees, I mean, I've been doing this for half a century. I know how most Canadians feel about most things, and that's how they feel about the Senate. It's like, you know, get it elected or, 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 or throw the thing out. And that's essentially what those tweets say. Once again, they may be said in a, in a some, somewhat bolder way. Well, uh, talk radio host, uh, but that's 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 the way most people feel. I, I take your point that you're saying you are reflecting the concerns of the people that you speak with. But bold, let me give this example. And I will say this is back from 2013. But you explicitly say cleaning out the Senate barn is not complicated. And uh, you suggest that if they, you paid them less money and gave them no pension, quote, the whores won't take the job. 
Now, you're going to have to work alongside people that you, yes, it, it may have been in the context of your profession, but, but that you've referred to as a group of whores, Charles Adler. So how, how do you expect that that's going to go? Well, I'll just do, I'll just do the Canadian thing. Uh, I'll just uh, ask them for forbearance, ask them for forgiveness, uh, tell them I'll redeem myself, you know, what, 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 whatever it takes. Uh, if you're expecting me to say, I see my colleagues as whores, I mean, you know, we can just uh, put this down. No, I don't. And, that, and that's the quote. Charles Adler does not see his Senate colleagues as whores. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Um, listen, Mr. Adler, it, it is not uh, just potentially some ruffled feathers in the Senate. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev's office reacted to your appointment by describing you as one of Justin Trudeau's biggest cheerleaders and most vicious anti-conservative attack dogs in the media. He says, uh, his office says, that this is evidence that uh, the Senate is still liberal. It's not independent like the prime minister pledged to make it. Do you have any concerns that you were chosen to sort of tick off the conservatives to get under Mr. Polyev's skin? No, my, my guess is I'll uh, get under Polyev's skin. My guess is I'll get under Trudeau's skin. My guess is I'll get under Singh's skin. And I'll certainly get underneath some, uh, some, some skin of, of people who think that uh, there's, you know, so something going on inside my mind where I'm suspicious that, that you know, that they're whores. I mean, all kinds of people uh, will, you know, put targets on my back and uh, take shots at me for, you know, choosing words that they wouldn't have used. Uh, I've spoken millions of years, millions of words over the years. And as far as the attack dog business, I mean, that's what the liberals uh, think of me as. Uh, many liberals in this country think of me as a conservative attack dog because that's what I've done most of my life. Well, let me let uh, me jump in there because have, you, you may uh, know that uh, Minister Dan Van Dal, in fact, said that Justin Trudeau could have picked a better person to represent Manitoba. <laughs> and I wonder what you thought when you heard I'm, that. I'm, I'm, well, I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up, Catherine, because. Doesn't that make my point gloriously? Doesn't that make my point vividly? Dan Vandell, lifelong liberal, is not happy that conservative commentator and writer Charles Adler is going into the Senate. He thinks that they could have made a much better choice, and I'm positive, even though I don't want to pretend that I can read the mind of the cabinet minister, I'm positive that uh, Mr. Vandell means that a better choice would have been a liberal choice. Well, I, I will not purport to read Mr. Vandell's mind either, but I do want to ask you a little bit more about this quest for independence that, this, that is underway in the Senate. You talked about Triple E. You know the current government has taken a different trajectory. Our colleague Kate McKenna did an analysis last month showing that 66 percent of Justin Trudeau's Senate appointments in the past year have donated to the Liberals or they worked with the federal Liberals or the provincial Liberals. What, what is your feeling about how that squares with an independent Senate, just how independent this institution is that you're about to enter? I think some people probably feel more independent than others, but I can uh, tell you, and you can you know, use this as a, another quote, Adler has never given the Liberals a dime. Mm. Yeah, fair enough, but I'm, I'm asking about the institution itself. Do you believe, as you head into the Senate, that you, I, I take, your point is you're independent. I'm asking you, is the institution in your mind uh, moved closer to independence? I don't think I can find that out until I go there. I mean, I haven't even been, been sworn in yet. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a rookie, you know, I've got the, uh, the training wheels on. As soon as I start riding the bicycle and, and meeting these folks, I'll be able to tell you in a nanosecond whether or not... Uh, the Senate is a liberal institution, ultra liberal, too liberal, too woke, too whatever. But I'm not going to, you know, do anything that my grandmother would object to. My grandmother said, "Never speak without knowledge." So I'm, I'm just not going to give you uh, a, a good answer today mm -hmm. because a good answer requires evidence, and I have no evidence. I, I take that point. I'm still going to ask you a forward-looking question, though, Charles Adler, because I think it's on the minds of a lot of people who follow politics. The polls suggest we're on the cusp um, in the next year or so of a change of government, and the Senate may play a major role. Um, do you see yourself working alongside a Pierre Polyev government? Because certainly you've had your differences with him. Yes, that, mm. that's the easiest question you could ever ask me, Catherine. I want all governments to succeed. And if uh, Polyev is the prime minister and he leads the government, I want the government to succeed, especially in the areas that matter most to me. Democracy matters to me. Equality matters to me. Justice matters to me. Bringing down the debt uh, matters to me. Uh, I'd love to have the debt being brought down. I'd love the, for the uh, Canadian dollar to rise. I was embarrassed uh, the other day just as a Canadian 
Uh, I was going to Vegas because that's where I go every year to, to celebrate my birthday, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, August 25th, if anyone is concerned. <laughs> uh, for the record, August 25th, I will be turning 70, which means, by the way, that um, I can only do five years yep. in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And that also means for all the people who are suspicious that my nose is in the trough and that I am some sort of, you know, W-H-O-R-E, I will not be eligible for a pension. Okay, for people who okay. think this is about the pension, I will not be eligible for a pension. Anyway, I went to the bank to get myself $100 of just walking around money. I thought, you know, in the first couple of hours at the airport, I may get uh, stuck for whatever reason. I need to have some cash. Mm -hmm. So I went to the Royal Bank and asked for 100 US dollars. And they said, no problem. That will be $143. Mm -hmm. So I just about gagged. And I don't mean to do the old fart thing. When I was, you know, 10 years old, I, I, I don't want to I don't want to bore your audience with that kind of stuff. But I think it's scandalous that it should cost us in this wealthy country with an abundance of resources, education, and people like Catherine Cullen. It is difficult for me to apprehend and embrace the idea that our dollar should be a 73 cent dollar. So I'm going to just ask you in closing then, because that kind of concern about the cost of living, I'm sure all political parties would say they embrace it. Certainly, Mr. Polyev would. You and the Conservative Party have your differences. But is there any world in that next five years, Charles Adler, where you could ever see yourself sitting as a Conservative senator? I doubt that uh, I would uh, want to be part of a, a caucus that is a Liberal caucus or a Conservative caucus. I love the idea of sitting in a caucus which calls itself independent, but I haven't made my final choice yet. I'll have to audit this, like auditing classes at a university. Mm -hmm. I'll have to audit the various caucuses. Everyone is inviting me, courting me to want to be in their caucus. So I'll have a final decision for you on that in the next uh, few months when I make a decision. But my guess is that whatever a caucus I'm in is going to be perceived as, feel like, and will be, as far as my particular proclivities, an independent caucus. I do not uh, intend to take orders from anybody, whether his name is Trudeau, Polyev, Singh, whoever. Uh, if, if that's the case, that is a deal breaker for me. It's always dangerous to make political predictions, but I'm, this is my birthday present to you, Charles Adler. I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to make one. Uh, your 70th year is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for taking the time to discuss this. It's I have a, a feeling once you're in Ottawa, we'll have to have you back on the program. It's a personal trophy for me uh, to be a guest of Catherine Cullen's on Power and Politics. Thank you so much. Thank you. But Adler's appointment has gotten pushback from Conservatives and at least one Liberal cabinet minister. Was it the right move? Time to bring in the Monday Power Panel. Brad Levine is a former communications director for the NDP. Vandana Qatar is a former advisor to Prime Minister Trudeau. And here with me in studio, Jenny Roth is a former Conservative campaign strategist and former CBC Ottawa Bureau Chief Rob Russo. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation today. Uh, Vandana, I want to start with you. I think it's a really interesting choice to name someone to the Senate who has had so many bad things <laughs> to say about the Senate. How do you make sense of that? I mean, the one thing that's been interesting for this government is that unlike, I think, past liberal governments, um, if you criticize them or if they don't like them, uh, it's OK. And they but, want but a diverse... I, I just want to be clear. This isn't about criticizing Justin Trudeau. He called senators a bunch of... I, I don't want to keep saying this word on television. I'll, <laughs> oh, this could be horse. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Like, that, that you know, that, that goes beyond criticizing the prime minister. It's the institution, the yeah, individuals. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, it's actually, I think he said it and addressed it himself. He's evolved. And I think, you know, where the Senate, it is hard to change it. You can't let perfection be the enemy. Maybe his viewpoints will be helpful here. The things that irk him the most about the Senate could be helpful in how he deals with the Senate and being a senator. And I think uh, that viewpoint would be interesting, which is why, you know, they probably got, well, I mean, his appointment was accepted. Um, he also has a, quite the resume. He's been a long-term broadcaster. He has seen the political landscape and joined the ranks of other people with great resumes. I'm thinking of Senator Sabi Marwa, Senator Ratna Omnivar, Senator Bernard, to name a few, all under this government. But, you know, I think his resume will speak for himself. And I think even his viewpoints will maybe just add a bit more color, should I say, to the Senate. <laughs> Colorful language, at least. I, I do want to ask you, though, Vonda, and I want to keep you on the hot seat here. But he's talking about Senate reform, you know, an elected Senate. Is there really any runway for that right now with this government? 
I don't think there is. I don't think there's a public appetite in the broad scheme of things. I think there's people who say, you know, the senator, Senate can be approved. I think a lot of people think there's things in democracy that can be approved. Um, that being said, I think the difference is here, you know, I remember the decision when I was with the government, uh, with the Liberal Party at the time in 2014, when we made the decision to change the Senate, and that was seen as something that was controversial, something different. It doesn't change the whole fabric of the Senate, but it did make a big policy change difference. And I still remember one week Senator Eggleton was in my caucus; he was chair of my Ontario caucus, and the next week he wasn't. Uh, I remember speaking to them afterwards, saying that they felt really bad. Senator Cowan, Senator Eggleton, saying that they were no longer part of the team. Um, they don't sit in the Liberal caucus, whereas. Conservative senators sit in the Conservative caucus. So I still think that's still a big push and a big change. Now, there are will be people out there, um, perhaps Minister Vandell or others, who feel that there should only be partisans elected to the Senate um, as a way to reward long-standing Liberal stalwarts, but that's not always the case. So I think this is the best way to bring some change, some reform, without having to really overhaul the whole thing. We may have to ask um, Mr. Vandell if he thinks only partisans should be elected to the Senate. Ginny, I want to bring you in here. Uh, I mean, what about the fact that I, I, I take it that Charles Adler is no great friend of uh, Pierre Polyev's, but what about the fact that he is pushing for some things that may be small c conservative principles? Yeah, there's no uh, evangelist like the uh, somewhat recently converted. <laughs> Charles Adler has had plenty of criticism for the Conservatives, and uh, it is a he's a Twitter troll figure in a lot of ways. I don't know that that's going to edify the Senate, so, and and I, I also think it's sort of like the peak of this idea that somehow by uh, appointing independent senators, who I don't think are independent, I think they're just aligned with a certain type of interest in Canada that tends to be a more elite interest, a more institutional interest, and that, that tends to be, whether it's big L or small L liberal, uh, a liberal interest. And you see this with uh, the blocking of uh, certain legislation, like Bill 234, to exempt um, some, some items from the carbon tax. Um, and I think uh, Trudeau, Trudeau's desire to bring in people who think like him into the Senate, uh, I think this is sort of going to be looked back at the peak of that. Uh, and I think the public has an appetite now for change, and they won't want to see a Senate that blocks um, the kind of change they want to see brought by Parliament. I think that does lead us to some interesting questions about the future of the Senate, but I just want to stay where we are for a moment. Um, now, to soon to be Senator Adler made it clear in that interview that he feels he gets under everybody's skin. He certainly doesn't see himself as a partisan, but I think it might be useful to just have you spell out for us uh, just how irksome <laughs> some of the uh, CPC firmament might find Charles Adler right now. Like, he, there, d not many conservatives view him as a big sure. C conservative. Sure. I, well, to be honest, I don't think conservatives spend a lot of time thinking about Charles Adler. Um, you know, if you see him in the Twitter feed, it's like, this guy, um, I think, gets a lot of credibility for speaking out against conservatism because he says he used to be a conservative, but that doesn't make, make his critiques any more legitimate. I think he just sounds like a guy harping to a certain kind of audience on Twitter because it gets him a lot of engagement and clicks. And I think that's how he's going to be in the Senate, too. Um, and, I, and I think there's a reason that I mean, it's hilarious to me. I, I can't imagine the impartial panel um, that's supposed to execute against Trudeau's Senate independence uh, uh, had at the top of their list Charles Adler. Like, that I would be shocked if that was the case. And so the prime minister wanted a guy who was going to um, make it tough for Polyev over the next um, few months. And actually, honestly, I, this seems to me like a prime minister who knows he's on his way out and wants to drop some bombs uh, to, to leave behind for his, um, whoever comes after him. Brad, I want to bring you in here. Obviously, uh, the NDP, no great lovers of the Senate historically, um, but maybe sort of bring us up to speed. Like, how, how do you view what has what the Senate has now become? Well, I mean, today or on the weekend, uh, the Prime Minister advised the Governor General to appoint a Liberal and a Conservative uh, to the Senate. Um, you know. You know, news, news, <laughs> news, news on the power panel at uh, <laughs> at uh, at five uh, thirty-five Eastern. Uh, so, you know, I mean, what I find fascinating about about Adler and he's getting all the all the ink. And, and let's be fair. I mean, let, let's not overshadow the fact that Saskatchewan now has a failed Liberal candidate uh, representing them uh, in the upper chamber. But like the, the notion out of Polyev's office that like you know this is Mr. Adler has what five decades. Of of uh, you know of commentary, it is conservative in its nature. When he is taking his place in the Senate, he will look at legislation uh, in his capacity as a senator through a conservative lens. 
what Polyev doesn't like and what the criticism here is, is that because Mr. Adler has been critical of the Conservative Party of Canada, therefore he is not a good Conservative because he's not a movement Conservative. He doesn't come from the same background as, as Polyev uh, and the people around him. Uh, that should be disconcerting in what is acceptable. He's going to be bringing a conservative lens of legislation. He's going to be looking at the, the amendments that he wants to do. And about 30% about of legislation in the past uh, while has gone from the Senate back to the House of Commons with amendments. So if you want to suggest that Trudeau's changes post-2021 uh, haven't had some impact, I think it would be a bit wrong. It's not a rubber stamp like it used to be, uh, but that still doesn't mean it. There is hope, though. As someone who has been as critical of the Senate as Mr. Adler has, there are there's a glimmer of hope here that he doesn't become captured by the institution itself and can be a voice for uh, change uh, of this outdated institution from within, kind of like a block Senate, if you will. Uh, maybe, maybe there's some hope there that we can get a glimpse from the inside from somebody who's been so critical. So please, Mr. Adler, don't be captured by the institution itself, and please use your uh, station uh, as a senator to continue the, the, the critical nature to create more democracy by getting rid of this appointed upper chamber. Okay, Rob. Was Charles Adler a good appointment. Given everything we've just heard, what can we say about that? Um, ask me in five years at the end of his term, um, but as it stands now, the Prime Minister appointed a stalwart defender of the Prime Minister. Um, whether he's a Conservative or not is almost immaterial. Now, does that mean that uh, uh, he will remain a stalwart uh, supporter of, of Liberals and, and, and the current government? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he followed, I was saying to Ginny before, in the Churchillian tradition of not just ratting, but re-ratting. <laughs> uh, and uh, so if he decided that, uh, that he, it was better for him and his philosophy to support a Conservative government, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case at all. Look, I think that there is reason to be concerned about the Senate. I, I, I was around when the Senate actually did, from time to time, produce some uh, very good reports. The number of substantial reports coming out of the Senate, I think, has dropped by about two-thirds. The, uh, the cost of the Senate has gone up substantially by about 25 or 30 uh, percent in, in the last five or six years, and it's not producing as much. Now, I think you can do good work in the Senate, and maybe he, he will, but I think we need to ask more of not just, not just uh, Mr. Adler, but of all senators to take advantage of the opportunity that they have and produce better legislation with the research staff and other staff that they have at their disposal. And I hope he does that. Vandana, there have been uh, quite a lot of criticisms over the course of this panel about what is happening with the Senate right now and the attempts to make it independent. And I wonder if you could just give us a crisp little thought about uh, how, how you see all of that. I think people are always going to doubt what the Prime Minister is doing here. I think there is always going to be cynicism as to how independent, having worked in that office, working in the Prime Minister's office, you know, they don't have to take orders from the Prime Minister's office. They can think independently. There's no repercussions for it. There's no, oh, this, will ha this won't happen to me, I won't get into cap. There's nothing like that there. Um, if the Prime Minister doesn't want something to be changed, well, too bad if they want to change it. So it is playing out, as Brad said, in real life. Things get sent down with adjustments all the time. Um, so I think uh, that is happening, but there's always going to be what Mr. Polyev is doing and what I is going to say then poke holes in that. But that being said, I haven't heard any suggestions from him as to how to make the Senate better or more effective. I do like what Rob said. I think I think of Romain Dallaire and the work that senators can do, and I think they can drive that. But I do think there's a lot of good work happening there. But, uh, you know, there's always going to be criticism of the prime minister. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. But I do think, you know, we have a set of very interesting senators who do interesting things. But perhaps, unlike days past, they don't know how to utilize what they're using right now in order to get that type of uh, media attention on op-eds or papers they want to put forward. But, you know, perhaps they can still do that. Ginny, like, to what extent do you think we are going to get a Polyev vision for the Senate? I think um, Polyev's view is that Parliament has to fulfill the will of the people. There may be a role for sober second thought, for policy research um, and, and reports uh, and studies, but ultimately Parliament has to fulfill the will of the people. And um, the best reflection of that is an election and, um, uh, uh, and a party forming government, um, whether with a minority or a majority. 
Um, and honestly, whether it's the Supreme Court or the Senate or institutions that want to try to block that, I think you're going to see if Pierre Polyev becomes prime minister and forms government, a concerted effort on their parts to say, we are going to pass the mandate that we were elected to pass um, through legislation, through regulation, what have you, and try to build a Senate in, in support of that. It is interesting uh, when you talk about that, that you're putting the Supreme Court and the Senate in the same basket. It, it's, it's all one and the same from where Pierre Polyev stands? Yeah, I, th I think, um, and I'll speak for myself, I think there are institutions in Canada that um, are not as concerned with uh, paying close attention to what Canadians want to see in policy. Um, and who want to make decisions for themselves based on their own ideology. I think you see that in the Senate today. I think you occasionally see it with the Supreme Court. Um, and I think we need a reversion to um, getting closer to democracy and the will of the people. Uh, well, I think we can say the future of the Senate will be spicy, is what I'm predicting, uh, not only with the addition of Charles Adler, but some questions about what it's going to look like moving forward. Uh